Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. First time passing through, hit the thumbs up, thumbs down, wiggle it all about. You can subscribe, you can share, yeah, you can do all of those things. You can interact with my subscribers and I'm sure they will be keen to respond to any comments you have. And yeah, I just want to thank you all for your participation, for your input, for your feedback. Yeah, love you for that. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about the trimming down of the monarchy. Now, we've all, we all know that the Queen is ready to step down in 18 months. And who's standing in her place? No other than Prince Charles. And Prince Charles wants to trim down the monarchy. Why does he want to trim down the monarchy? Because of the embarrassment caused by Andrew, first of all. And the unspoken embarrassment of Prince Harry, Marion, Meghan, Markle. They don't say it out loud, but you know, the hush-hush and the innuendos and the press and all of that make it very, very kind of um, mucky, for want of a better word. So, yeah, so they don't want wives and... Um, the, what you call it, not the nuclear family, the extended family, to, to be have any say. They don't want them to be working royals. So they want to trim it all the way down to just Charles's family, um, their wives and their husbands and their children. I don't know how they think that's going to make a difference. In this day and age, how can you protect anyone from what you're trying to protect them from. We're not going to say that, you know, Prince Charles's um, nuclear family is going to be a convicted paedophile or he's going to have be, you know, associated with prostitutes or they're going to marry somebody of colour. We can't say that because maybe they're going to put them in that, um, that space hotel. Have you heard about the space hotel? Well, it's £9.2 million for a 12-week stay. At least if they ship them all off to that space hotel, they can protect them from the dark, eerie realities of life. And they can create and create them into the type of people they want them to be, the type of people they want to rule the world. So, I mean, like I said, I said in a previous video, people are human. The fact that Prince Harry has married a mixed race woman might not have been heard of. But we all know, well, rumours have it that it was because Diana was, Diana was associating with an immigrant why she met her demise early. We don't know if it's true, it's just rumours. But the royal family do not take too kindly to their image, their character, their reputation being tainted in whatever way, whether it's through Prince Andrew or whether it's through Prince Harry inadvertently. I mean, they're just doing what they normally do as humans, but they forget that as royals, they have to set a standard. And when they drop that standard, trouble. So anyway, in 18 months' time, we're going to have a king. We're going to have Prince Charles as king. And like I said, his first move seems to be that he's going to trim down the monarchy. Now, what do we really need a monarchy? I mean, he's going to step in. So I thought I would let you know what the monarchy is, just in case, you probably do know, but just in case you don't, some of us live in this country and we just hear about the Queen and we hear about that and we don't really know much about the background. So I'm just going to run through it very quickly for those of you who are not in the UK and even those, even for those of you who do live in the UK but who do not know what a monarchy is or what purpose it serves. So, a monarchy is a form of government where the individual or group of people in power are determined through bloodlines. Specific rules are in place that dictate who can be named a ruler or st state in a monarchy, and Prince Charles has been named, as we all know. 
Apparently, the advantage of a monarchy is that there is predictability in the government. But I'm not quite sure how that works, because the primary person who makes the decisions is the prime minister. And if Boris gets in, what kind of predictability is that? There's no predictability there, apart from the only thing we can predict is that the whole of the UK is going tits up. That's the only, that's the only prediction I see. And you notice how they're getting down on Jeremy Corbyn. They're really lashing out left, right and centre. They do not want him to get in at all. Because their plans to create World War Three will go out of the window. So they don't want that to happen. They want to be seen as doing what's in the best interest of the country with a stiff upper lip, and us poor little people down here, we just have to follow them around and take whatever's coming to us. That's a sad thing. But anyway, we're not here to talk about politics. So there are specific rules and laws in place that will determine who would be the ruler and when they would ascend to that leadership position. But apart from that, they exercise little power. So we know that in 18 months time, Prince Charles is going to lead on that position. The disadvantage of a monarchy is that the people being ruled rarely have a say in who gets to be their leader. And we all know that to be true. The modern monarchy is typically a figurehead in the government instead of being the all ruling overseer of everything. The primary duties of ruling are given to the Prime Minister, who reports directly to the King or Queen. Because decisions run through the ruling class and often through a specific individual, a monarchy is more efficient than most other forms of government. Instead of a massive bureaucracy and lots of red tape and to navigate to get laws passed or benefits authorised, one decision can be made that decrees everything that needs to be done for the society. And the decisions that is being made is to reduce the core members of the monarchy. That's one of the decisions which eliminates scandals related to extended members of the family. Um, like I said, um, just because the lines of successions are outlined before they are needed does not guarantee that the next ruler, i.e. Prince Charles, will be competent. How do we know Charles will be competent? How do we know he'll make a fair and unbiased king? What is his legacy? Being born into a specific position is very different than being specifically educated and pursuing a career that can lead to an individual into a leadership position. It's like, you know, when you're at work, you work in some, you know, like in the government or the health sector. And people who get management positions are not managers. They could have been, um, they might be skillful in, let me see, um, they could be technicians. You know, you could have a PhD in, um, in history, say, for example. But that doesn't mean you'll make a good manager. And you get a lot of people just because they're qualified or because they have academic qualifications, they then become managers and they do not make good managers. So similarly, you know, just because someone's been appointed to be a king or a queen doesn't make them a good king or queen. You know, I don't think, um, you know, I, my mother is nearly as old as the queen. I think they're the same age but I haven't seen anything that detrimental happening while the queen has been in reign. So, you know, I have to consider that she's been a good queen and we have to hope that Prince Charles is going to be a good king. Um, how much does the royal family cost the taxpayer? Direct funding to meet the monarchy's official expenditure is now through something called a sovereign grant. In 2016 to 2017, the sovereign grant was 42.8 million. 
rising to 76 million in 2017 to 2018, with the increase earmarked for refurbishing, uh, refur refurbishing Buckingham Palace. Um, character of Prince Charles. Prince Charles has voluntarily paid income tax on his income from another landed estate. The Duchess of Cornwall since 1993. In 2016 to 2017, that estate yielded him revenue of 22.5 million, on which he paid tax of 4.76 million. So he's a taxpayer. That shows he's of decent character. Um, he, he grew up. He, Oh, I'll just read this. His father was quite critical of him. Charles was often cowed by his father, brusquely critical personality. Friends who spoke with Charles' permission described the Duke's belittling and even bullying of his son. Vanity Fair writes, And while Philip's intention was to help Charles to toughen up, it may well have been one of the reasons he's been described as extraordinarily sensitive as well as a people pleaser. Well, that could work to his advantage or it could work to his disadvantage. It's nice to know that he's sensitive and sometimes when someone's overly critical, it does mean that they don't necessarily um, have the confidence to do things um, that they need to do and be tough when they need to be tough. So hopefully, I mean, he's got Camilla on side. She looks like a little tough cookie. So that's probably where the balance comes in. Um, when, oh, I don't need to say that, um, he definitely wasn't molly coddled. His grandmother was a great influence in his life. Um, Prince Charles experimented with vegetarianism, sacred geometry, horticulture, educational philosophy, architecture, and Sufism, according to the New Yorker. Conservatives tend to be upset by his enthusiasm for Islam, and his environmentalism. Liberals object to his remnant defence of fox hunting and his protectiveness of Britain's ancient social hierarchies. What unites his disparate positions is a general hostility to secularism, science and the industrialised world. So we have a little bit about Charles on that, what we might expect from his character as king. Um, like I said, he intends to get rid of all the hangers on, keeping um, the royals down to a bare minimum. Um, yeah, I think at 71, he is now seeking to appoint only those in direct line of succession. And Prince Andrew and his daughters will no longer undertake royal duties because of the scandal. Um, they're saying it's bad news for Meghan and Harry. I doubt if they care if they're going to be in direct line. I, they definitely didn't do it, you know, to inherit the, the crown. Sometimes you just have to, you just have to take, you just have to accept that some people are quite genuine and sincere in their relationships. Not everyone's out to get something. And that's the problem with this world. You know, everybody's so sceptical about people who are half decent. They always think they're out to get something or they're trying to get something off of people. It's absolutely ridiculous. But it just shows you what their personality is like, what their character is like. Their character is probably to take advantage of people. And so they automatically assume that somebody's out to get something for nothing or, you know, exploit a situation. And that's what they think of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Um, let me see. It's all going to happen in 18 months. I wonder what else they'll cover within 18 months. It's quite a long time, you know. So one thing I like about these people, they're very positive. I mean, she can say in 18 months, I'm going to step down. You know, I would have thought she would say, oh, my God, you know, I'm 93 next year. I think she's 93 or 94. You know, I haven't got that much long to live. You know, I better step down now. Or even six months. But, oh, no, 18 months. It's very, very positive. But I guess even if she was, God forbid, to pass before then, 
I guess that he would take over automatically now he's been nominated. I would think. Anyway, um, I'm, you know that space hotel I was telling you about? Um, space tourists have already been there, you know. Well, not to that particular one, but they've got space and tourists paying over 20 million for a weekend stay. And you know, when I'm telling you sometimes about these billionaires who've already got a plan to jump ship when everything goes tits up on earth, when they've made a mess of our countries, that's what they intend to do, you know. They have all tend to go to this space hotel. Anyway, space tourists will have a new orbital destination. So they've already had a destination before where they've been going called Orion Span. Aims to loft its Aurora station in late 2021 and the beginning and begin accommodating guests in 2022. Can you imagine a hotel in space? So we're probably okay for the next couple of years, folks, because this isn't going to be ready <laughs> until 2021 or 2022. So we can relax a little bit because um, they, they can't jump ship before then. It's not ready. Um, so according to Orion Span founder and CEO Frank Bunger, we are launching the first ever affordable luxury space hotel. Affordable is relative a 12-day stay aboard the Aurora Station will start at 9.5 million for a 12-day stay. The Royals can afford that if they want to protect their children, that is. Still, that's quite a bit less than orbital tourists have paid in the past. From 2001 through to 2009, seven private citizens took a total of eight trips to the International Space Station, paying an estimated 20 million to 40 million each time. These private missions were brokered by the Virginia-based company Space Adventures and employed Russian Soyuz spacecraft and rockets. So they've been up there already, love. Can you imagine paying 20 million? And 40 million a time. So, like I said, the Royals can protect their reputation and technically rule the world from outer space. That's all I've got to say, peeps. Ciao for now.